Let's talk about intersections. In geometry, an intersection is where two or more figures touch. In the real world, we typically talk about intersections with streets and directions and addresses. So you could say something like the post office is at the intersection of Main Street and 2nd Avenue. And it's the same idea when we apply this to geometry. We're looking for where do two lines or two roads intersect, or where do a line and a plane intersect? Where do two different planes intersect? The intersection of two lines, or rays, or segments is always just a single point. The intersection of a line, or a ray, or a segment, and a plane might be a point, or it might also be a line or a ray or a segment. And the intersection of two planes is a line. Let's take a look at some examples. Here we have a segment, AC, and a line, BD. And I want you to identify the point of intersection between those two figures. In other words, what is the only thing that they have in common? Where do they touch? Where do they cross? And the answer would be point E. That would be the intersection of these two figures. Let's look at the intersection of a plane and a line. So we've got a lot going on in this diagram, but I, what I want you to focus on for this one is where does the vertical line, FH, cross through that two-dimensional plane called P? And that answer would be point G. You have to imagine that this is in a three-dimensional space, Plane P is two-dimensional, and then line FH is going as a vertical line up and down through the plane. It actually punctures the plane at point G. In fact, when I teach this lesson in class, I always take a piece of paper and a pencil, and I stab the pencil through the paper. That's what you have to imagine this kind of looks like, is a line, or a pencil, going through a plane, or a piece of paper. That point where the pencil goes through the paper is the point of intersection. That's the only thing that line FH and plane P have in common. That's the only place that they touch. But now let's talk about line JI. I want to know where does line JI intersect plane P. Now JI is actually on plane P. Point J is on the plane, point I is on the plane, so is point G. They're all on the plane. Therefore, the intersection of these two figures is actually the entire line Ji. For this example, when I teach it in class, I take that piece of paper and I just lay the pencil on top of it. The pencil is touching the paper at all points along the pencil. So the pencil is the intersection of those two figures. Or going back to this example on the screen, line Ji is laying on the plane. Therefore, all of the points on that line intersect with that plane. So we say for this example that the intersection of these two figures is line Ji. Now let's talk about the intersection of two planes. Here we have plane P intersecting plane R. Their intersection is a line, specifically line ST. When two planes intersect, they intersect at more than just a single point because planes are two-dimensional. So their intersection is going to be an entire line, which remember is just an infinite collection of points, instead of just a single point. Let's look at another example. We're going to be using this diagram for the next few questions, so take a second to examine it. We've got a plane, we've got some points, we've got some lines on the plane. And the first question is, what are three collinear points that you see in this diagram? Remember from the previous lesson that collinear means that they are all on the same line. So there's actually a couple different answers you could give here. I gave the answer of A, B, and C, because point A, point B, and point C have a line drawn between them. But you could have also given the answer of E, B, and F. Those three points also have a line drawn between them. Either answer would be equally correct. But let's stick with A, B, and C for our answer so that we can answer question B. Name a point that is non-collinear with A, B, and C. 
Remember that non-collinear means that it's not all on the same line. And basically you could pick any of the other points that you see in this diagram because they're not on the same line with A, B, and C. I picked point D, but as it says, you could also say point E, F, and G. All of those would be non-collinear with points A, B, and C because you can't connect all four of the points with one single straight line. Now let's talk about coplanar. Remember from the previous lesson that coplanar means that they are all on the same plane. And there's actually a lot of points all on the same plane. Basically every single point except for G is all on the same plane. But I'm going to pick A, B, C, and D for my four points. Just the first four letters of the alphabet. So what is a point that is non-coplanar with points A, B, C, and D? Well, G is your only option. G is the only one that is not drawn on that green parallelogram, so you have to assume that G is either floating above that plane or below that plane in a three-dimensional space. It might look like if you were to extend the sides of that parallelogram, it would eventually intersect with point G, but that's only because we're limited to a, a two-dimensional screen or a two-dimensional piece of paper. It's hard to visualize planes on paper or on a screen. You have to imagine that point G is floating above or below that plane, and therefore is non-coplanar with points A, B, C, and D. Now this next question might seem like there's no answer. It says, name a point that D is collinear with. And D is just a single point that has no lines drawn through it, so you might think that there's no answer. But remember that a line can be drawn through any two points. So for example, I could say that point D is collinear with point A and draw a line between them. You could do the same thing with point D and point B or even point D and point G. One point is not enough to make a unique line. You would have to identify a second point in order to make that line unique. So if I choose point A as my second point, then the line would look like that. We've got a similar question up next that says name a point that G is coplanar with. And again, that might feel like a trick question because G isn't on the same plane with all the other points. But remember that it takes three points to make a unique plane. So you can pick any two other points that you want to. I'm going to pick point C and point F. They're the closest points to point G. And I could draw a plane that goes between those three points. So just because a plane or a line isn't already drawn on a diagram for you doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. You know that any two points can make a line, and any three points can make a plane, so you can make whatever figures you need to. Now let's name two lines that intersect. Well, there's only two lines already drawn on our diagram for us, and yes, indeed, they do intersect, so I would say that line AC and line EF intersect at point B. Our last exercise for this video asks you to do some drawing. Again, if you don't have any paper or pencil handy, that's fine. Just do it in your mind. We're supposed to draw any three non-collinear points and label them P, Q, and R. Remember that non-collinear means that they're not all on a line together. So I'm going to draw my points here, here, and here. You could draw them anywhere you want to as long as they're not all in a straight line. Basically, you'll end up making a triangle. Then we're supposed to connect those points to create each of the following figures. We have PQ, QR, and PR, and the symbols above each pair of letters is different. Those symbols relate back to what we learned in the first lesson, actually, of segments, lines, and rays. PQ has just a segment drawn on top. There's no arrows. So that's the kind of figure that I should draw between my point P and point Q, is just a straight line with no arrows. Done whereas QR has arrows on both sides. So when I draw line QR, it needs to have arrows that go beyond the points. And then PR is a ray. I can tell that it's a ray because the symbol above those letters, one side has an arrow and the other side doesn't. It's important though that you make sure that your ray that you draw between point P and point R goes in the right direction. Remember that to name a ray, the endpoint has to be written first, and then any other point on the ray gets written second. So P is where the ray is going to begin, and then it's going to continue through and beyond point R, like so. And now you know everything you need to know about the intersection of lines, rays, segments, and planes.